Well, hi everybody. You are in bed with Eurovision Ireland, and the lucky, lucky man who's jumped under the covers with me is none other than fan, writer, and now for the first time singer, Michael James Down. Hello, Michael. Hi. How Hi. are you? Good, thank you. Just uh, comfortable in my little onesie. Oh, can you can you stand up and do a do a little twir twirl in your onesie? I can maybe get up on my knees. This is my onesie outfit here. Wow, that is pretty special. <laughs> you want a wee see of my Betty Boots pajamas? Let me see. Oh, very nice. What very nice. They say they say, <laughs> trust me, I'm single on them. <laughs> no, mine doesn't have that, but it probably should, to be honest. Oh well. Anyway, tomorrow must be quite an exciting day for you, Michael, is it not? Yes, uh, tomorrow is indeed. We have, well, I have a song in the Swiss uh, online national selection for Eurovision for 2014. Um, and tomorrow the voting opens. So, yeah, if, check out the song and if you like it, vote for it. Yeah. What's the name of your song, Michael? Yeah, the song is called It's Not Impossible. And it was written by uh, myself, uh, Jonas Gladnikov, who actually his songs represented Ireland at Eurovision in 2009, that was uh, etc. and 2010 with this Neve Kavanagh song, It's For You. And we also have Primoz Poglain on the song, he's done national finals, you've got Dimitri Stasos, he's, he wrote uh, Soraya's song in 2009 at Eurovision, and he also wrote Aphrodisiac uh, for Greece two years ago, no, last year. So yeah, it's like a big Eurovision team on the song, so we'll see what happens. It is, you've certainly got the, the power people behind you anyway. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and there's one more person. I know Johnny Sanchez is on the song. I can't forget to mention him. So yeah, quite oh, a lot of okay. quite a lot of people on it. But yeah, it was fun. So. And how did you go from? I'm assuming you are a big Eurovision fan, of and course. it kind of, it's gone from being a fan. You then um, you had quite a few songs in last year's national final, mm -hmm. and now you're singing yourself. How how did you go from uber fan to singer and songwriter? Well, you know, it's funny because, you know, I, I get asked loads of questions by just like other fans and, you know, I read things online now and again and, you know, saying how the transition from like just being a fan to everybody to actually writing has been so quick. But actually, like I've been performing and singing since I was like, you know, 10 years old and um, I've done loads of musicals and things like that. Um, and I also studied music at the Royal College of Music in Manchester in England. So I've always been writing and performing and stuff, but I guess I don't really tell that. You know, I haven't really told people. And um, I just thought, you know, one day, like a couple of years ago, why not use Eurovision as a platform for some of my stuff? So obviously there's a lot of stuff I do which is not related to Eurovision, but yeah, at the same time, I use it quite a lot to kind of get my music out there. So that's pretty much it. And I really love it. I love the contest, so that's why. So I sing and I write, and but it's all fun, you know, so... And you, you came quite close last year to getting a song into the final, didn't you? Uh, yeah, a couple of times actually. We um, Our song, I think the closest we got was in Latvia. Uh, our song came second, and it came second by 69 televotes, which was really hard to take, but it happened, so it's fine. Um, and then we came second in Moldova, and that song actually won the televote, but the juries didn't go for it, so... We, oh. I know, and then in Iceland we came third, so yeah. Oh, so we're hoping to go just that one step further this year. Yeah, well, it's you know, like, the idea of doing the national finals is obviously always, you know, to get to Eurovision, but, you know, realistically, a national final has, you know, up, sometimes up to 30 songs, so for us to even get to the national final, you know, there's hundreds of songs that are sent in. We're just happy for that. And if if it so happens that, you know, we do well in the final or we get to Eurovision, that would be a huge bonus for us, yeah. And you may or may not know this, but um, we all, lots of fans have their, their other competitions that they, they put in. And there's a, a, song, a song competition called Consol, which uh, is yes. songs that didn't make it to Eurovision, and um, your Estonian song, um, was it Estonia? Finland? We didn't do Estonia. Finland? We didn't do Finland either. <laughs> was it maybe Iceland? Iceland, yeah. Oh, they're all up there somewhere. Yes, 
your Icelandic song did particularly well. I think you came third or fourth in Consol. So. Oh, wow. That's really good to know. That's cool. So there you go. Um, am I also correct in hearing that you, you're singing a song in the Swiss National Selection, but you have another song also in that you've co-written on. Is that true? Yeah, it's funny, actually, because... The Swiss selection, you know, it comes about every year. It's the same thing. It's the online selection. And we never really plan in advance for that kind of thing. You know, we just kind of, once the, the selection's open, we think, well, you know, if we got anything that could suit that. So I thought this year, yeah, why not enter a song that I've, you know, I'm singing on already? Why not do that? But at the very last minute, um, we actually, con well, we, we got in contact with a singer called Daria Kinzer. Um, and she represented Croatia at Eurovision 2011. Um, and obviously with Croatia not doing Eurovision this year, 2014, they're, they've, they're taking a step back. Um, she was looking for another opportunity to maybe try again. So Switzerland was a good opportunity for that. And she really liked one of our songs and she recorded it. And uh, yeah, so we just decided, let's do this. So we entered it. So I'm actually, I've got my own song when I'm singing. And I've got, and I'm a writer on, which I co-wrote as well, and then I'm a co-writer of the of the Daria song, which is getting actually um, quite a lot of hits on YouTube, which is really cool. So. Oh, well, so if, if you can't get through with your song, then you'd be happy to go through with Daria then. Yeah, of course. I mean, you know, like I said before, it's uh, it's really just fun. We would love to get to Eurovision, but, you know, it's, it is quite tough, and there's tough competition, and there's fantastic writers out there, so it's a lot of, it's just fun at the end of the day, and, you know, not being from Switzerland doesn't help us, and, you know, not, there's not a Swiss writer on the song, never mind a singer, so we understand that that's going to be even harder, but if you're, my, my, my motto is always, if you're not in, you can't win, so why not try it? Of course, of course. And talking of fun, it was back, I believe I first met you in Dusseldorf, and was that 2010? Yeah, two th did we meet? I th was that the first time we met? Because I do believe when you thought my name was Elaine Vasily Dove. Oh yeah, I, that was probably it. I yeah. was convinced that you were like engaged to, uh, to the French guy or something. I was convinced I was engaged to the French guy as well. <laughs> and this year, I think, was it, was it 2013? Saying you were like, were you Elaine, Elaine Farid or no, Mama Dove Dove? Mama Dove Dove, yeah, right. Elaine Farid, but that is now sadly over, unfortunately. Okay. Well, so maybe I next. know you, um, you, we, we saw that, like, when I met you, that's how I remember you as Eurovision fan out there having fun. Yeah. When did Eurovision and your love of Eurovision start for you? Uh, you mean just my love of Eurovision as a fan? Yeah. Um, well, I've. It's funny because I've all. We always say, you know, the the, the fans of Eurovision always say, "Oh, I've always loved it." Um, but I would say the first memory that I have as a child, and it's probably not. You know, I wasn't that young. I wasn't like four or five. Was um, probably I think it was maybe 1997 when Katrina and the Waves won. I, I remember that really vividly, and then the following year, 1998, I remember parts of that, but I think, um, and then again, 1999, I remember Charlotte Pirelli and stuff, but I think the, the big first contest that I was like, wow, you know, and as a teenager was 2002, and then 2003, as, as a real fan, and since then, it's just kind of been like that. Okay, and how many have you actually been to? I've only been to two. I, my first one was in 2010, so I went to Oslo, which was fantastic. Um, I actually only went for the second semi-final and the final, um, and then in 2011 I went for the full week, and it was just as you know because you were there, and we had a, a few. We were at a few parties together. It's oh, pretty. You certainly were. Yeah, it's good fun. It's really good fun. So we all know as when you go out there, we end up collecting various press backs and bits of Eurovision memorabilia. Yeah. Um, do you have any around just now that you could show us maybe your favourite piece of uh, Eurovision memorabilia? Well, actually, in my wardrobe, I have this bag, and it's like, I got it out there a second ago. It's one of the bags you get at Eurovision with the, the, the logo or the slope. Ah, feel your heartbeat. Feel your heartbeat, indeed. So it's packed full of stuff like books and handbooks and, you know, all the stuff you always get. But 
my most prized possession from Eurovision is definitely my Jed head. Ah, oh, yes. Uh, we, no, we, we like that here at Eurovision <laughs> Ireland. Oh, my goodness. So, I'm going to show you my favorite piece of Eurovision memorabilia. And okay. I want to see if you can actually guess what they are. So just give me a second. Okay. So I have to guess. Yeah. Okay. I was given these. What is that? Let me see. Turn it around. Oh, are they are they like hot pants or something or shorts? They are Lithuanian and no bangly hot pants. That is amazing. Are they the actual? Are they the actual ones they wore on stage? No, they they're ones that they they obviously had a a pile of um, various ones to hand out to fans and, and okay. journalists and. I gave in cool to my Scottish pants, so they returned by giving me their underwear. <laughs> did you wear them? I wore them in the press centre, but I did wear them over trousers. There are certain sites that people are just not ready for, and me in hot pants is one of them. <laughs> I'm, say I, I'm saying nothing. Look, I'm the one that's sitting here in a onesie, so <laughs> can't really talk. Anyway, I think on that, um, it was great having you speak to us today. Yeah, that's All good. the best with your song. Thank uh, you very much. Are, do you know, are we able to vote or are you not sure on that yet? Or yeah. Is it only... the, voting, the voting opens tomorrow, which is the fourth of, Monday the 4th of November. Um, and you can vote. Now, it changed. I'm not sure if it's changing this year, but previ in previous years you had to open like an email account not, or a website account or something like that um, and to, to be able to vote. And I think you were allowed to vote like three times. Um, but all the information will be on the website tomorrow, so check out the Swiss uh, Eurovision website, which I'm sure Eurovision Ireland will put on the on the page where this interview is. Of course. And uh, and if you like the song, I mean, of course I would love you to vote, but only vote obviously if you like the song. You know, it's it's really important for that. Cause well, all the best with it, Michael. And uh, just um, before we go, can you clear up one thing for me? But, yeah. Uh, um. I heard a nasty rumour that uh, out in Dusseldorf, when Denise Welsh did her documentary, uh -huh. there's a famous scene where she has a massive chomp on the end of somebody's hot dog. Now, rumour mill has it that you were the man on the other end of that hot dog, is that correct? Yeah, Denise Welsh had a, had a chomp on my, my wiener, my wiener, how do you say it? <laughs> <laughs> I think there's going to be quite a lot of jealous Eurovision fans out there, as you've just said that. Yeah, no. Anyway, yeah, well. Thanks again for chatting with us. Um, viewers, you can catch us uh, online at EurovisionIreland.net, and you can get us on Facebook at Eurovision Ireland. Michael, thanks again. Good luck tomorrow, and Thank hopefully you. all our viewers will get voting for you. Yeah, that would be really cool. Thank you very much. That was fun. No bother. Bye. 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 -bye.